Hey, what's up guys? It's your man Foriam again, back with a new boss guide for War Tales. A complete series in which I share everything you need to know to defeat any elite on extreme or the highest difficulty in the game. From preparations to combat setup, builds, weaknesses and takedown strategies, these guides will basically have it all. Not only will they work for extreme, but also lower difficulties, as the strategies used are similar yet easier. Today, Kagal, Ghost of Herak, will find out who is the real hunter in War Tales. Spoiler alert, it's not him, so let's get down to business. Welcome back to another boss guide on extreme difficulty. Month 10, day 7 already on this save. We've been playing for over 65 hours, but uh, yeah, we've already cleared three bosses. In the previous video, we did Matthias Lent in the southern part of Tiltrin, while earlier we also took care of Alexa in Vetrus, and also went for the big boss in Gozenberg for the first weapon. Liberator, Splitter and Lucilla, while today we're gonna focus on another one with a ranged weapon in the southwestern part of the world, Kagal, the ghost of Herak. Be sure to pick up the contract, ladies and gentlemen, in the inn, so you can make a nice amount of money after you've destroyed one of your bosses. Seems like we're gonna have to do a little bit of resting before we get to our main stop, so let's do that. Eat the nice snacks, ladies and gentlemen, which will make your power in combat even better increase the dexterity, maybe your critical hit chance, or for example, movement speed, and even more Valor points. Always have plenty of Valor points ready for battle, so you want to staff some of your characters in tents, while you also want to have the strategy table occupied for even more of that buildup. I don't have any amazing dishes to eat today, so I'm just gonna rest with some regular pike soup. We're currently standing in Tiltrin County, as you can see, near the tomb of Tiltrin. And this is where I placed a couple pitons to basically get to Arthes a little bit easier, as this is where we will find Kagal, the ghost of Herak. So always recommended, guys, to use these pitons to make travel so much easier. I mean, I keep saying this in every video, but check out how OP these guys are. So we're just using these to uh, get to a secret, which we picked up earlier. We've got another one right here. So we're just going to click on that. Uh, we can even go to the north right here. But uh, this is where I placed another one to basically go to the other region. I am no ghost. I am Kagal. The best hunter. <laughs> we'll talk about that later. We get almost 300 gold if we finish him off, so let's start the fight. It's also worth noting that he comes with some compadres, six companions who will aid him in combat. So we've got three boars as well as three wolves, Kagal's brother in arms. So let's start off with those as they can be pretty annoying. So these will deal damage to the target and also force them to engage. So these will constantly take the attention of your companions, which can be pretty annoying, but also brother in arms. Every time an allied animal dies, this unit will gain one wrath. So it will basically increase its damage by 30%. So the more animals you defeat, the more damage they will deal. And the boars are pretty similar. Feral charge, disengage, and also charge in a straight line, deal damage in the path, and also apply vulnerability. So if it hits multiple of your companions, this can be pretty brutal. So you basically want to take out all these animals as quick as possible, but not too fast, because this will basically make Kagal stronger. If we look at him, he has a bow equipped with a special ability, the Indomitable One, which basically deals damage to all the units in the area. With a critical hit, it will even knock them back by 2 meters and also lose 10% of their maximum HP. So pretty scary AoE damage, while it also has beast taming. All allied animals engaged in combat will execute an attack of opportunity against their enemy. If there are no allied animals, he will basically cause reinforcements and then I think you will have six new pets to deal with, which can be pretty frustrating. In addition to that, you will also gain animal protection for each allied animal not engaged in combat. So he will become super tanky. Right now he has six stacks of it, which reduce the damage by 15% each. Also has the brothers at arms, also gains 30% damage increased for each animal that dies. 
So what we need to do right here is make sure that we don't get engaged by all the pets. So the easiest thing for your setup would be to already counter that by just placing everything on one front. So all these animals basically don't have enough movement speed to get to you in the first round. But in addition to that, you want to deal with some of the animals to reduce those stacks of animal protection so you can take down the boss a little bit easier. Once you've taken down the boss, the battle is over, so you want to make sure that happens fast. Especially when you start taking out those animals, because they make Kagal deal more damage. As I already said, the best thing to reduce damage on bosses is to apply weakening. I have this on almost all my characters, but primarily on tanks I think this is the best with weakening blow. Taunt itself will already reduce it by 50%. But first, what we're going to do is focus on our setup. So we have two tanks in the front line. Ragnar is my damage dealing tank. He can already butcher a couple of these piggies. While Maximus is going to engage with Kagal and make him deal less damage. Not only that, but we also want him to not shoot towards my team members. Check this out. So I will just engage with him. See, I will barely deal any damage because he has the support of all the pets. With the six stacks right here, the damage reduced is insane. Well, we don't have to worry about that too much right now. We first want to just deal a little bit of damage. We just want to weaken him to begin with and then focus on all the other targets. So now we're going to end turn and he's going to shoot. Check this out. He will shoot the shot which he just did before the wolf started moving, will shoot to everything behind him as well. So that's why you don't want to stand right here, because then everything behind it, our crew, will be damaged as well. So first make the distraction for Kagal. So he's facing the opposite direction of your crew. So they will not get hit by his ranged attacks. So right now, I see this piggy is playing next. I'm going to try to take it down. Kick it in the face gets dazed oh that's perfect we're just gonna disengage hit it another time finish it off see one stack of wrath same counts for all the others right there but the good thing is the next pet in line is this one so i think i'm gonna first deal with z piggy you know what i'm gonna use the run i'm gonna cast this Quite some valor, but wow, look at that. That was amazing. Anyways, Ed turn. We can finish off the swine. So that's the second piggy dead. He has another stack of wrath. So now his damage has increased by 60%. Check out how much this will deal. Now it's 14. You would say a lot more while my tank can take the damage, guys. It almost has... 300 armor so you don't want to worry about it too much he can shoot again by the way in the next turn so uh yeah we're just gonna continue killing some of his friends there we go another stack of wrath that's three a little bit more damage let's focus on the piggy right now So we just did the call pets, which didn't have any effect because there are still some of the pets around. So what you want to do is make it so that you will have at least one wolf on the battlefield. So we're going to take this one out as well. Now you will see that uh, the final wolf gets to play with five stacks of damage, but he's still too far away. So we won't be able to do anything. But yeah, if you want to prevent that damage, you can always just put a tank in front right there and the turn. And now, of course, you see that um, our rogue is not very well positioned. It's standing right behind uh, the tank, so it's taking damage from those arrow shots. But um, this is the moment where you can start dealing damage to Kagal, as he only has one stack left of the animal protection. Check this out. A lot of damage right there. We can do the torch strike as well. Wow. He's going down in no time right now, but... Uh, Again, even with those five stacks of wrath, it's not that scary. Let's uh, end the turn with Lucille right here, see what's going to happen. So this wolf will engage with uh, Ragnar. It's one of my tanks, so the damage is not going to be scary, while Kagal yeah, is just constantly hitting Maximus for baby damage. He just costs beast taming. All animals engaged will execute an attack of opportunity. 
There was one wolf, so no reinforcements were called in. The next time he will call in animals with the beast taming, six animals will pop up. While as you can see, right now he doesn't have any animal protection stacks anymore. So he will be super squishy while he does deal a lot of damage. Six times 30% minus, of course, that 50. So yeah, in this case, what we need to do is just take him out as quick as possible, which we can do with some basic skills. Anyways, let's quickly rewind and do that again. I mean, we have a crew of six companions, so we can stand in the center, right? Uh, Kagal gets to play first, and after that we have the wolf. So I'm just gonna place the wolf as close to Ragnar as possible so he can finish him off while um, we want to engage with Maximus. And I'm just gonna stand the oppos on the opposite direction once again, so so he won't be able to shoot my allies. So he's weakened, ending my turn. Shot will only hit Maximus. Now the wolf is going for Ragnar. He will retaliate with some basic damage. Let's uh, quickly deal with this piggy. Floops. The next two turns are for Kagal. So I'm gonna deal with one more of his pets. You know what, let's take out this wolf as well. So Kagal can not call in new reinforcements because we still have two. This wolf will go for Ragnar. He will retaliate, possibly even kill it. There we go. Oh boy. Now we can kill the final wolf. Woo. So all pets are gone in the first round, which was pretty brutal for him. And now we're going to start dealing damage. That's the first shot. Second shot. <laughs> <laughs> wow, Kagal, who's the hunter boss? I'm not sure it's you, but hey, we get our hands on this nice reward. The indomitable one, a level 8 bow with the piercing arrow shot. Deals 50% of your dexterity damage to all the units in the area with the critical hit. The target is knocked back by 2 meters and also loses 10% of their maximum HP. Which of course is amazing if you give it to one of your archers with a high critical hit chance, which I happen to have. But let's first have a look at the best hunter of Herak, ladies and gentlemen. Anyways, if we quickly click on Ari right here, she has a critical hit chance of 60%. So yeah, the bow of Herak would suit her perfectly well. While I'm not really sure this is the best bow in the game, I still absolutely love just raw damage with the shoot skill, as of course, if you combine that with uh, precision and thrill of the hunt, you can stack damage, have a higher crit chance, Combine that with recoil shot, ladies and gentlemen, and you will be the best hunter in the game. Ladies and gentlemen, a big thanks for watching. That's everything you need to know to take out the ghost of Harak and get your hands on a sweet legendary bow. If you found this video helpful, as always, please do hit that like button. You have no idea how much it helps out the channel. And yeah, share your thoughts about my tactics in the comments down below. Maybe you have even better ones to share with the community. But I think this is the best difficulty to experience War Tales to the fullest. That's it for today. Guys, have an awesome one. I'll catch you in the next video or live stream. Take care. Peace.